While it's questionable if gaming phones really are necessary, it's not stopping companies from launching them and launching these phones with crazy specs. This is the new Asus ROG Phone 2, and it might be the highest spec phone out right now. While the original ROG phone was already pretty impressive spec-wise, the second version here just adds even more on top of that. Now, Asus gave a few of us some time last week to mess around with the ROG Phone 2, and so I figured I would try to do a complete walkthrough. Now, if you guys aren't familiar, a complete walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there is a lot to go through, so let's get started with the styling. Now at a quick glance, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between the new ROG phone and the older model, but they're definitely different. We do still have the usual ROG flashy look with the glossy back, but there is a bit more of a rainbow effect now to the lines in the back compared to the original. It's subtle, but you notice it. The device is now also taller, slightly wider, and thinner than its predecessor. We were told during our briefing that a lot of the feedback they received was from gamers that wanted a larger phone with a larger screen, and they figured out that the max width they could do was about 78 millimeters. This was enough to make it easier to play games while in landscape mode, but also still comfortable to use in portrait orientation as well, they said. Now, because of that width limitation, they made the device taller, and the screen is now a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio, 6.59 inch display. That display is still an AMOLED display, partially for the bright colors and contrast that it can produce, but also, Asus says, because of the less than one millisecond response time of the panel. In addition to now being a proper HDR 10-bit, which means better contrast, more color gamut, etc. panel, it's also now a 120 hertz panel instead of the original ROG phone's 90 hertz. This means that any games or apps that support 120 hertz can show you 120 frames each second to make for smoother motion and less blur. Besides the refresh rate, Asus says that they also added 240 hertz touch sampling and optimized the kernel and Android framework to get touch latency down to 49 milliseconds, which they're claiming is the lowest in the market right now. Moving around the device, we have our volume rocker and power buttons on the right side, as well as the return of the air triggers. These two areas end up being on the top of the device when using it in landscape and allow you to put virtual buttons on the screen that you can then initiate a tap with when touching the triggers. This means that it works with any game out there because they're customizable, which is cool. Asus also has upgraded them to make them more responsive after feedback they received about the original ones, they told us. And they are capable of detecting a finger resting on them now, have dual vibrations to make them feel more like physical buttons, and can now detect a sliding action, which can be customized for use in certain games as well. On the left, we still have the side-mounted USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port that everyone loved about the original ROG phone that allows you to use the phone in landscape and charge it without it getting in the way of your hands while playing a game. It also allows you to use accessories. There are some new ones too, by the way, but we'll get to those in a bit. On the bottom, we have our other USB Type-C port, which is USB 2, by the way. On the top, we have nothing. On the back, we have our new dual camera setup. Now, if you are familiar with the Zenfone 6, it's the same setup. We have a 48 megapixel quad Bayer Sony IMX586 sensor with 1.6 micron pixels when used in its default 12 megapixel configuration and an aperture of f1.79. That main sensor is paired with a secondary 13 megapixel 125 degree wide angle camera used for ultra wide shots and we have a dual LED flash. We also have a 24 megapixel front facing camera that has been positioned at the top right so that when held in landscape, it isn't blocked by your hands for those that might want to play a game and live stream at the same time. We also have a fingerprint sensor built in under the display. Now, since the model we were given had unfinished software on it, I wasn't able to do benchmarks or photo samples or any of that fun stuff, but subscribe to the channel and ding the bell next door. Subscribe to be notified for when I do my real world tests, which I will do once I get a proper review unit and it'll have all of that and more. Now below that rear camera, we have our ROG logo that is, obviously, RGB enabled and can be customized in the ASUS Armor Crate app that we'll dive into further in a sec. Along those same lines, we also have an NFC enabled case accessory that notifies the phone when it's been added to the back of the device and can adjust the theme, etc. Also, the second flash for that camera is then used to light up the logo on the case, which is kind of clever. The device is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus, which is a slightly higher spec version of the Snapdragon 855 that we're used to seeing in our usual suspects of flagship phones. But Asus has also overclocked it just a bit. The processor clock speed is set to 2.96 gigahertz versus the usual 2.85, and the Adreno 640 GPU is clocked 15% higher to 675 megahertz instead of the 585. The Snapdragon is paired with 12 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM and 512 gigs UFS3 storage. 
For battery, the device has an impressive 6,000 milliamp battery that is ROG hypercharge capable, which they mentioned can charge from zero to 4,000 milliamps, which they pointed out is more than most phones have, by the way, in just 58 minutes. For connectivity, we have everything up to 802.11ad, also known as Ygig, which is kind of like a line of sight short range Wi-Fi in the 60 gigahertz range that is capable of six gigabits per second, as long as you're pretty close to it. The idea here is that you can use this short range ultra fast connection and the AC Asus Ygig dock accessory that came out when the original ROG phone did to say stream a game to the TV with less lag so you can control it properly. Speaking of, we have a few new accessories as well. We have a twin view dock 2 that is now lighter, has better weight distribution, a 5000 milliamp battery, cooling fan, and a 120 hertz display that you can put the phone into to have two screens. Some games support this, some don't. We also have a kunai accessory named for the small Japanese knives of the same name that it kind of resembles. This essentially turns the form factor of the ROG Phone 2 into that of the Nintendo Switch with two joysticks, one on either side. You can also slide them out and put them in a controller type contraption to use it, again, like a Nintendo Switch in docked mode. You can even combine it with the new Twin View Dock 2 to get the two screens and controllers. Finally, for software, it's running Android 9 with Asus's ROG UI on top and comes with an app called Armory Crate that I mentioned that was also on the original ROG phone, by the way. The app now can also be used as a game launcher as well as the normal things to adjust settings for controls, air triggers, RGB, fans, give profiles to specific games, etc. Beyond that, there's also a Game Genie app that can be summoned by swiping in from off the screen on the left. It used to be on the right, but Asus moved it after feedback from users saying it interfered with some controls and games on that side. This then allows you to control your notifications, see your phone's system info, create macros for your game, record your game, or even set up live streaming, etc. Now again, this is all pre-release software, so these apps and the different included apps can change and probably will with each market. Now lastly, they showed us a theme that can remove the gamer looking one pre-installed to make the phone look more like stock Android, which I frankly appreciate. Unfortunately though, we weren't able to use it as it wasn't ready at the time of filming. There you go, complete walkthrough on the Asus ROG Phone 2, the best I could do with the pre-release version that I had. Again, subscribe to the channel and ding the bell next to subscribe so you get notified when I do the day in the life or real world test where I'll do the photo samples, compare it against other devices, battery test, the whole nine once I get a proper unit. Let me know what you guys think about this phone though, about gaming phones in general. Do you guys own one? Would you own one? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. Always like hearing from you guys. And if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. And again, if you like what you see there, please subscribe. Also check out the link below. Uh, there's a link there to sign up for my email newsletter. It goes out once a week, every Sunday. Uh, has all the videos that I do here on the channel, as well as other tips and tricks and news and stuff that I do on the website that doesn't necessarily make it here to video. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.